Caddis Maximus here, this time with a video about repairing this Onkyo TX-NR808. I got this for 30 bucks off of Craigslist. Uh, there's a special engineering mode. I guess I'll get that right out of the way. On many of these Onkyo receivers, main last 10 to 15 years, these they're all digital, not just Onkyo, but all, all the modern receivers. They're computers. And for maybe my regular subscribers, when you get in the high-end electronics, they are, I shouldn't say, it's like a world of art. So when you start getting into expensive electronics and you're into that, um, unfortunately with the modern ones, it isn't going so much into the amplifiers. They're getting more efficient, but they just aren't built quite as heavy duty because you're paying for just the whole motherboard, a whole computer board of electronics and the licensing and the cost of all the chips. It's kind of unfortunate. Onkyo over the last decade has had a variety of issues with chips uh, th with thermal fatiguing. It happens in computer graphics cards. There's a tons of videos known as BJ we working. And so that's the issue here. This receiver has the infamous, it seems to turn on and work fine, clicks twice. It interacts fine, except for the little the speaker grid array. This is a 7.1 receiver. It's not displaying and there's just no audio output, even in its quote-unquote pure direct mode that bypasses electronics. Research online seems to show that most of it has to do with the culprit, which is the little DTS, Dolby Digital Decoder chip over here. And so we're going to see. There's uh, how you reset the Onkyos is you would, like on this unit, you would hold the VCR button, you turn it on, you'd hold the VCR button, you'd press the power button, it'll say clear, you'll continue to hold that for a couple seconds, it'll turn itself off, that's a factory reset. There's an engineering mode where it counts the hours that the receiver's been turned on, just like a piece of equipment with the Hobbs meter, an hour runtime, like generators have hour meters on them. That mode's a bit different, you'd have the receiver on, there's always going to be a display which will change what information is displaying on the screen. You press and hold display and then you press simultaneously just tap the power button but it won't turn off. Then you let go of display and there'll be like a setup button somewhere either down here or up on the upper part where you can enter setup and as soon as you hit setup it'll tell you the temperature and then the number of hours. This receiver has provided a life of 22,000 hours. So I can see why the person wasn't super upset. Uh, he was aware of the HDMI board issue. Apparently this has never been fixed. This was one that just happened to just work. It just worked like it was supposed to for 22,000 hours. That's a respectable lifetime. A lot of forum posts were saving 17 to 20,000 hours. So this already exceeded a good lifespan. So I'm going to see if that's the issue. It exhibits it. So I'm going to apply just a little bit of heat. Um, for anybody watching these videos about trying to fix the Onkyo DTS chips, the things about using halogen bulbs and hair dryers, that more or less could work, but you don't have any way of telling how hot the chip is. And you have to be aware that these are run through ovens. That's why they use these special non-electrolytic uh, so capacitors that are the traditional black plastic wrap, have like a liquid inside them. These are aluminum. They really last a lot longer and they can be run through the ovens. The solder melts at between 190 and 210, 215 degrees Celsius, 375 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So first I'm just going to try heating up this chip, doing a reset, and just heating it up, seeing if that will cause, if that seems to be the root of the issue. Sometimes those chips just totally burn up or other chips burn up and it's basically, I'll just take this thing apart. You know, for 30 bucks, I'll just use it for various uh, components and parts for projects like a big heat sink and capacitors and things. Another quick note uh, about the amplifier section on these. I mean, this one's decent. It's a 7.1 push pull, 14 power transistors total for all uh, between all the channels. It weighs 40 pounds. You know, it's pretty decent. But once again, just so much money is being spent on the motherboard that the amplifier section just isn't. I currently have a an older 7.1 Yamaha that was like right at the cusp where they were. You could use the microphone for them to set themselves up, which is awesome. I mean, on the Yamaha, it is really awesome, the self-configuring receivers. But it, it doesn't have all this stuff. This You know, the modern receivers now just have like a litany of icons on the bottom, and that's what you're paying for. And unfortunately, they are sacrificing a bit. You know, it meets its advertised specifications, but it's just not as overbuilt as ones from like 15 to 20 years ago for the amount of money that you're spending. Um, 
it's kind of unfortunate. Now you have to spend fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars to really get the heavy duty amplifier sections along with the electronics. But with Onkyo's the amount of issues that they've had, you know, this once again it happens with a lot of electronics, but it's still unfortunate. They did extend the warranty a bunch. This is out of that extended warranty. They'll give you a rebate, which is like 35% off of uh, MSRP on some various receivers. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take this and have this Harbor Freight IR-20. Harbor Freight has a variety. You really want some type of a heat gun. You don't want a touch contact probe because you don't want to be touching this chip when you're trying to get the solder to remelt. Uh, you really want something where you can point at it. This one happens to have a 20 to 1 ratio, so it's going to have a nice tight spot. And it's going to get some pretty good readings because it's a black chip. Um, really pretty optimal here. So we're at uh, 68 degrees. We're going to heat this up to maybe 150 or something and see how it goes. If you are doing this, uh, trying to fix an Onco receiver and you have only a hair dryer or something, uh, it's, it is so important to be able to tell how hot that's getting. Otherwise, it's just a crapshoot whether you're getting uh, just warm enough for it to work for a little bit or a week or you're actually maybe getting it hot enough to cause the solder to remelt a little bit. It will be a periodic issue and you really need an electronics professional to pull up the chip and you know recondition it and re-solder it. I'm going to use this little pen. This has a pretty narrow nozzle. It's not an electronics one, but it is a pen type heat gun. So I'm going to be able to really uh, get the heat concentrated on there. It only took that long. How hot is it right now? 129, maybe just a little bit more. We're getting pretty warm there. Wave this around, make sure I really get the good reading. There's a good reading. Hundred and fifty three now, hundred and fifty four. It's a hot chip, but heck, the GPU in my computer idles at hundred and forty degrees. We're just going to go ahead and uh, plug this in while that's nice and warm. It'll probably be around 150 when we're done, and that will be just fine for testing it out. We're trying to make see how it operates when it's warm. This is really good news. Just doing that heating up. Ah, Here, this is the speaker grid, and look, it came back just heating it up. So as soon as that happens, you're like... Okay, amazingly, this may be one solved by doing a heating up issue. Um, I tried pressing down on the chip. That didn't work. So I heated it up. I just turned the receiver off. I did a, uh, another factory reset, and the speaker icons came back. Uh, I do need to say that you need to be very careful when you're working on electronics and you're trying to test them when the case is off. You need to be aware, of, really aware of where all the power comes in which is over on the left here you do not want to touch that you need to be very aware i also can't believe i actually ended up with a unit that is bad solder joints on the dts chip it seems around a third of them are just uh totally dead that either the issue isn't just with that chip it's with other chips or that chip just ends up getting burned up and uh that doesn't repair it it also doesn't tell me, I mean, after this, I actually have to put in a Blu-ray and see if, <laughs> if audio comes out all the channels. And a little bonus, a lot of the stuff on this, you know, the electronics is like the, you know, serious satellite streaming and everything. Uh, if you look around online, and I could tell you, I could even do a review of some of these serious units. Uh, there was a time to get 100% all 150 channels of Sirius Satellite Radio, lifetime unlimited, forever. But it's tied to specific old hardware, but if you find some of that old hardware, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Just forever lifetime satellite. <laughs> no subscription necessary. So what's integrated in here for satellite radio doesn't mean anything. Okay, so I'm going to try the repair now. 
I'm doing a quick close-up here of the board numbers before I forget, just so anybody who needs it uh, can see those board numbers. At the end of this, I'll talk about the overall construction of this unit. I was going to try to pull out this board, but it has like a million connectors, like 10 screws, and just trying to get this wire out, I already broke the connector. It has like finger pinch things, and so I just said after spending like 20 minutes bending all the little fingers back, I said I don't want to go downhill. Let's try to get the repair gone. All right, here we go. I'm going to start preheating it. It's going to be a little noisy. I'm going to get it to around 300 degrees or so. Get this out of my way. Constantly measuring the temp. I can say about this new harbor, this IR20 unit is it has a real res fast response rate. You gotta find just the right position where you see the highest temperature, that way you really know you're on it. You gotta make sure that you don't let the heat gun get too hot either. So I periodically pull this away just to try to get a really good measurement. And you wanna limit the amount of time by probably taking too long and may have to redo this here. I'm going to give it just a couple more seconds. Try to get a better measurement off of this. 360 degrees or so, but I don't know how. Okay, I wasn't heating. If you let the housings of these heat up, then it really can throw off their accuracy. I've been really reading up on that. I'll do that one more time here. So, it's tedious and you gotta really let it heat up and really get to that melt temperature and let it sit there for a few seconds. That's the easy way. I didn't cut out a piece of aluminum foil, which is something that you may want to do just to help protect heat from the rest of the circuits and components. I want to let this cool down the room temperature and then I'm gonna see how it runs leave it on for an hour or two if it does work after this and see if it has the issue I may have not quite got enough heat in there maybe not quite got it properly so it may work for a week or something but then you just come in and try it again with maybe just a little bit more heat because there's not really anything to lose on a receiver that dies like this so anyway I'll be back in just a second here and uh, after I leave it run, I'm going to see how hot this chip is and see if maybe we it needs or it really does need a heat sink. And if it does, uh, there is like double sided thermal tape. I'm going to find a little, you know, like a piece of wire or something that I can bend to use as a to give it spring tension to hold it on so it's easy to pull off and just use a little bit of standard thermal paste. 
Okay, I have a quick update. So far, it's actually working. That was the actual fix. I went back and made sure I got that chip to at least 375 degrees. We'll see how it is. Uh, I haven't tested any of the HDMI switching or upsampling or the networking or any of that kind of digital stuff, but it does put out audio out of left and right. The pure direct mode works, so <laughs> we're making progress. But I wanted to show this real fast. The root cause. Both of the CPUs really need heat sinks. If I can get this aim just right, this little chip is our, this thing's been on for 10 minutes and with the case off, uh, and this chip is already over a hundred degrees. This other CPU out over here, if I can get just the right angle, we can see is really starting to get warm, 115 degrees Fahrenheit already. So both of these processors need heat sinks. If you have a receiver that works, get order some little heat sinks whatever the size of these little chips are. This is like 5 eighths, and this is just over an inch. You know, this is going to be like 28 millimeters or something like that. Um, but definitely need uh, some heat sinks. I mean, that chip right there is getting pretty warm, so I could see, and I, it's actually getting some straight up hot. It's not even driving anything. That one's really not so bad. It's really surprising. It may be when I actually play a movie and there is full-on seven-channel multi-channel decoding then that's when this will really uh, start to have an issue. These of course will have to process more information. I'm gonna hunt around try to find some heat sinks to show what I'm gonna do for my solution. Uh, there's also with the channels driven even in the pure direct mode which is kinda interesting that's the channels which appears to be this board and this board for the left and right uh, are already like 125, 130 degrees, so that's the source of a lot of the heat. The transformer itself isn't bad. That's what causes a lot of heat in the Yamaha that I have versus this stuff. Anyway, this has been a long video, but it was kind of an experiment. I'm glad it worked out, even though I had trouble with this connector here. We'll hope that it holds out. We do know the source, at least on this one, is the issue, so you know I can decide if I want... You know, an electronic shop's going to probably charge a lot of money to desolder and resolder both of those chips. Um, so I'm just going to hold out and just use this method because it seemed to work out for this unit. And I just wanted to make this video kind of for my subscribers. This is a project video, as well as anybody looking up the infamous Yamaha no sound bad chip thing. This is at least another video showing uh, that the heat trick worked. But that you really got to get it to the right temperature without just totally burning up uh, that little processor. And the last thing, we got to find some kind of little piece of aluminum, something to keep these chips too cool. Because these chips, that chip is ridiculously, it's not ridiculous, it's almost too hot to touch. I did just touch it and, and if I can get, you know, this at the right angle here, here, get right over that thing. Look at that, 138 degrees, and it's running in its direct mode. And one last measurement on this chip, it's already climbing towards 105 degrees. Really kind of a shame. Heat sinks would, could have alone prevented a massive amount of all these problems Onkyo had. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out. And people can leave in the comments if they want me to kind of like do more of a review, at least an internal kind of review, and overall just an audio review of the receiver, providing that it holds out. See you in the next video. Bye.